Hi, I'm Gail. Welcome back to my how-to series on how to make your own flower arrangements. Today I'm going to show you how to make an arrangement in hopefully less than 10 minutes so that you can just whiz up an arrangement at any time. Feel free to just copy what I do and I hope you have fun. Now to do your arrangement you're going to need a little container, a piece of oasis, which is the green spongy floral stuff that you soak in water, some secateurs, maybe a pair of scissors, a stapler, some plastic florist film and of course your flowers or leaves. Today it's going to be just leaves because I actually don't have any flowers so we've got aspidistra leaves here, plain ones, variegated ones and even unopened ones. Got some succulents here, hair's foot fern, and the leftover flowers from some baby Nandina. So, first of all, we need to trim the piece of oasis to fit the box. This has been soaking in some water. Don't push your oasis down into the water, otherwise, you'll end up with uneven wetness. Now, just pop, pop the oasis inside the plastic film and squeeze it down into the box like that. Up. Now we need something to go at the backing. I'm going to use these aspidistra leaves, but because they're quite big and because we're using a small uh, container, I'm going to fold them around and staple them. Just like that, a couple of staples. This is a really good way of changing some really nice tall leaves into some shorter leaves. So let's just pop them in the back of the arrangement, poke them down a fair way and that will create our back corner. Whenever you've got a point or a hole or something like that, always have them going in the same direction. But you can see, see through the hole there. So we've got the point going that way and the hole going that way. So if you've got more than one thing that's a feature, make sure that all of your features go the same way. Okay, so we'll pop that one there. There we go, that's our corner. Now with our variegated ones, let's have a feature of those over in this, this corner. Now see how that one's sloping backwards? That's going way too far back because it's actually got a bend in the stem. So I might trim some of that stem off and see if I can make it stand up a little bit straighter. Okay, that's not so bad. The next stem's quite short. Let's see if we can fan that out. So I'm just slightly overlapping and the last one will need to be overlapped even more. So I'll have to shorten that stem. So once again, if, you, if you're doing a feature thing, make sure that you follow the same pattern. Now because that leaf is so much, so much bigger than the other leaves, I'm going to swap that one and that one over. And this is what you can do when you're working with Oasis. It's very forgiving, so you can actually move things around and create a slightly different effect. These succulents are going to go towards the front, so I'll just we'll have a feature down here. That's that stalk is going to be too long, so let's give that a trim. And it's also got a bend in it, which would actually create a problem. So you grow all these things in the garden, and then half of it gets trimmed off anyway. So let's pop that in there. We've got other little bits stuck out there, so we don't want them. We can trim them off. And whenever it's got a curve, curve in the stem, let's get rid of that too. And that can go down there in the front. The container I'm using is actually the remnants of a Ferrero Rocher box. So I don't tend to throw too many things away. There's always a use for things somewhere else. Okay, so we've got our features there. We've got our three aspidistra leaves that haven't opened. Perhaps we could pop them in amongst the others, perhaps in between. So we have one, one there, one there, and the other one out here. So they're kind of roughly in between the, um, the other leaves at the back. The only colour I've got is those. These are the 
um, the remnants of the flower pods from baby Nandina plants. So I'll just cut them up a little bit and see if we can just create a little colour patch up in there. I tend to use a lot of the remnants of things. Like I love to recycle. Once a flower dies, it doesn't mean that that's the end of its usefulness. Quite often, one of the most useful things that you'll find in your garden is the actual is the seed pods or the remains after a flower dies. So I'm forever putting those sort of things into arrangements. And when you haven't got any flowers available to you, which I don't actually have at the moment, you can just whack these bits and pieces in and come up with a little colour feature in the middle of something. So don't think that because a flower has died that that's the end of its usefulness. Pop that in there. This one's even got some berries on it which actually makes it look quite nice. I'll see if I can bring it up close enough so that you can see the berries. Okay, so that, that actually makes it look quite good too. As you can see, we're three quarters of the way through making an arrangement and I don't know how many minutes into it, but I reckon we're going to do this in less than 10 minutes. So you don't need a massive amount of time to come up with a really nice arrangement. And we've even, even got just a few leaves here, so I might be able to um, just pop them down in the front somewhere and see how we go with that. Actually, up behind here might be nice. And then that ties in because it actually does belong to the Nandina. Okay, so now we're just going to finish off with some hare's foot fern. I love this stuff. It's really soft and frilly looking, even though it's green. And it just gives an arrangement a lovely feel. So we, we can actually cut that can actually cut that stem quite short and then pop it in the front and it'll splay out both ways. Right, let's see, I need to find a little piece of oasis to poke it into and then just spread it out underneath. So that gives a little bit of a lighter effect at the front. So this just softens it up and actually fills in the gaps around the place. So if you're new to flower arranging, you can have all sorts of fun just with whatever's in your own garden. Just be as creative as you like and see what you can come up with and I'll bet you amaze yourself. I do public speaking and quite often, and, and I arrange flowers whilst I'm speaking, which actually takes people by surprise because I actually talk about the books that I've written. Um, one's What We're Weirdly Like, the other one's Unscrambling Grief. So I'm talking about an entirely different subject, but I arrange flowers. I started to do that because I was a bit nervous about public speaking to start with and I thought, I really like arranging flowers, so maybe I could do that while I'm speaking to make me not so nervous. So once I start, stopped feeling so nervous about the speaking, people said, no, you need to keep arranging flowers because it's your point of difference. No other speakers do that. So that's what I've been doing. Now, I don't know if you're timing this, but we've actually finished the arrangement. Let's see. But there we have a flower arrangement done in no time at all. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you'll join me again soon and have fun with your flower arranging.